welcome to the first of many video tutorials on the World Domination Custom Cabinetry app. Now that name is just being silly, but um, the objective of this app is to allow you to manage your business and manage it well if you're in the custom cabinetry business. So um, looking at the navigation on the left here, this is this will be a template in Notion. Notion is the uh, engine behind it, and it is a codeless. You know, there's some formulas involved, but it's a codeless programming app that allows you to create your own app. And I've created a template for custom cabinet makers. So going over the different features or different sections or pages, we have a dashboard, companies, contacts, projects, rooms financials, processes, and images. And I'll touch on those briefly in this video, and then I'll try to go into depth into each one in their own videos for each section. So the dashboard is instructional, which is what this portion tells you, that this is just information. You don't do things here, you're just learning about the program here. And to start with, I tell you what the features of the program are, and these don't these are not all inclusive. There's other things that it can do for you, but these are kind of the flagship features. So single source of truth, everything about your projects in one place, accessible from your PC, tablet, or smartphone. So all the things we see in here today, we could also be looking at on our smartphone at a job site or at a, a client's home. Also a second brain. We can't remember everything that we need to remember. So we have a storage place to be able to access those things very quickly and that's a very valid uh, method of doing business and doing business well. Mini CRM. Most cabinet makers don't take the sales part of cabinet making seriously enough. At least that's my opinion and I think that that's one of the reasons that some cabinet makers aren't as profitable as they'd like to be is that they allow their sales or they ignore their sales and in the long term they end up having gaps in their work schedule and those gaps in their work schedule eat all the profit they made in the good times when they were busy. Um, sales pipeline kind of working in conjunction with this mini CRM. It's CRM being customer relation management. The sales pipeline is trying to find people and work them through your system. So initially they may know about you, but it will go into depth in that, but you're basically trying to move them from somebody who doesn't know who World Domination Custom Cabinetry is to somebody who's doing business with World Domination Custom Cabinetry. And those steps can be anything you want them to be. I've simplified them down to they're not aware of you, to they have become aware of you and then they're qualified. In other words, they need cabinetry and then a customer. But it can be a six step process, a 10 step process, whatever you want it to be, it's all just categories that you define. And then that creates a Kanban board to walk them through and we'll look at that briefly. Ballpark estimates. I am a firm believer in giving people ballpark estimates. Not the traditional ballpark estimate of one number, the number they never forget. If you give somebody a ballpark estimate, no matter what your proposal is afterwards, they'll say, well, but your ballpark estimate, so it needs to be a range. It should always be a range. I think it should be three numbers. Best case scenario, if you picked what the average person picks, and then kind of the worst case scenario, if you have really, really rich taste. And we'll briefly look at that as well. And then selections, gathering the selections you need to use for your estimating software, whatever that is, whether you're using your design software to estimate or, or estimating software specifically, however you estimate a job, gathering the things you need to get. This is just a good way to do it because, again, you can do it on your phone if you need to or an iPad or even a PC if you're in the showroom or in your office. And then a production schedule, really valuable part of this. This is managing your people and managing the process manage that job through a series of Kanban boards and again we'll look at that briefly. And then delivery schedule. To me this delivery schedule is the meat of the system. This is the flagship feature of all the features. This is how I managed my business for 23 years and I think that it is a big part of the success that we had in how we did that and we'll look at that briefly. Then throughput accounting. Some of you may value this, some of you may not, but I think this is an incredibly valuable feature. Some people will value it more than others. Some people are not willing to go to the trouble or do the work that allows this to work. But we'll look at it and you can decide for yourself. And there's also an image uh, manager or an image section. You see here that there's a page images. I don't speak to it here because it's not critical to the processes that you'll be doing. And here's some of the helpful metrics that you can get from this app if you use it and use it fairly well. Total cabinet quantity. After you've used it for a year, you'll know exactly how many cabinets you've built in a year. Now some people have been tracking that all along and this is just redundant to that. But 
the byproduct of using this will give you that total cabinet quantity, which is a valuable, valuable resource to do some of these other things like tack time. Um, and then you'll be able to calculate your tack time because you have a total cabinet quantity and you have a total revenue sales. Uh, how many cabinets you built and how much you sold those cabinets for, you'll be able to get a tack time and some cost per cabinet, things like that. All these things are kind of the byproduct of this number and this number, really and truly. But tack time being how many cabinets you built in a year. And so then you start bringing that down to a month, a day, an hour kind of thing. Total revenue, just the byproduct of using it and entering the information. Cost per cabinet, because you've entered this information, you, we'll do a little math on it and give you a cost per cabinet. And then your throughput, which will be accessed through this financials portion of it again we'll peek at that and then your net profit how much money did you make so we'll look at each of these here in a moment all these sections in a moment but here are just step-by-step -step instructions of how I think this should be used uh, a little simple instruction here saying that each one of these is expandable by clicking on this black arrow to the left of it these are called toggles and it allows you to scan a, a bunch of information so there's 19 steps here and this would be really long to scroll through if they were all open but you just open one read through those instructions and then close it up so this you're just reading through these instructions how you should use this section getting a, a client into your database and what that looks like and just some instructions about how you would do that then you would just close that up and then the next step getting prospective clients a ballpark estimate and changing your room status to this to the ballpark estimate when you do that and so then you click that, read all about that. These are just captured images telling you, showing you how you would do that. So very instructional. Instead of reading all these to you, just see that they're here and know that they're here. And we're actually going to go take a peek at them. So we'll start just at the top, kind of working toward that mini CRM. We have companies and contacts. This is pretty simple. We have in companies, the companies that we're wanting to try to target, or if they're already a customer, they're here in this column. You could even hide this column since they're already customers if you're in this mode of trying to look at this thing as a sales pipeline, but that's what this is. This is a view. There are multiple views in most sections, so if we looked at this in table view, or it wouldn't be nearly as helpful, although we can look at all the data about each one of these companies. It's not as helpful as the sales pipeline if your objective is to try to see where they're at in this process, working them left to right. So this first column is people that are suspects. They don't know who you are. You know who they are, but they don't know who you are. You've identified them and you want to try to make them a customer. And you're going to try to work them across this page, left to right, to become a customer. And then there's prospects. Some people will start as a prospect. They're aware of you. They already know who you are. Um, so they'll start in this column. And then there's other people that are also qualified, and they'll start this column. But some people will start over here. They don't know who you are, and then you, so you make them aware of you, and you move them to here. And moving them is as simple as just dragging them. So now that category for this prospect is changed automatically by you moving it. But you can also, and I'm going to put it back, so that moved it to the prospect category. By changing the category, you do the same thing. So now if I change it back to suspect, when we click off of this, he's back here in the suspect column. So the category, changing the category or sliding them is how you do that. So we've got a suspect, prospect, qualified, customer. We want to work them through that list and make them a customer. And this is just the visibility into I have this objective of trying to make these people my customer and I don't want to forget about that process and I want to daily look in here and see where I'm at in that process. Contacts is just purely storage, keeping the people that either work for one of these companies or are your customers. Each one of these is a different type. These over here are related to companies. These that aren't related to a company are your customers typically. And even those you might relate them to the builder and the contact that is the builder. And so in companies, Bill Akers is the owner of Akers Custom Homes. Mike Atkinson is the owner of Atkinson Construction. But when we come down here, this Barney Miller is a customer. And you see that here in the type. They're either a builder or um, the building owner. So these words can be anything you want. If you want to call this contractor, if you want to call these homeowners, if you want to call them customers, clients, whatever you want to call them, you just change those words and that's what it'll be from that point forward. So this is just storage for the people that you do business with on both sides of the transaction. You're either selling to or you are working with or 
buying from. It can be vendors as well if you wanted to. And so then kind of the meat of the system mostly falls into rooms, but all the rooms fit in a project. So we don't look at everything in the project level only because I'm going to encourage everyone that uses this app to try to work your rooms down into, they're part of a project, but into bite-sized pieces. Don't work in large batches. So with this projects, it's kind of the the holder for the whole project, and, and most of these are just test projects I've done in here to illustrate things. So we have test one, two, three, four. You know, th there's a bunch of test projects. And we have some Buckley Kitchen, Chapman 114, Cleveland Kitchen. So Cleveland Kitchen only has one room, the kitchen. Chapman 114 has multiple rooms. If we looked here, we would see that, and we'll see it in the rooms in a second. Then because this is a kitchen, it's only got the kitchen. These might have some rooms or multiple rooms, and they may not. So we'll look at the rooms next. But this is the, kind of the, the storage place for the whole project. And the advantage of having this here is that you can scroll to the right and have the big picture. So this is the big picture, total project cost. And if this happened to represent a year, now this only represents a few months time, but if this represented a year, this would be your total sales for the year. And then you could use filters to say, I only want to see projects that were done in the year of such and such, you know, 2020, 2021, whatever that year is. And you would see your total sales and the total cabinet quantity. This is total sales and total cabinet quantity for several months. Then we would go to the room level and the rooms is where everything is at. And so here we see we have a Buckley Kitchen, Buckley Kitchen. But here, Chapman 114, we've got all these rooms. We've got kitchen, master bath, laundry room, powder room, kitchen, and butler's pantry. We can put more than one room into a room in the sense that this rooms is storage rooms. It's not, not necessarily just one room. So if everything is the same, for these two areas, the kitchen and butler's pantry, same door style, same finish, same hardware, functional and surface, all of those things, then I can combine them here if I want to. Don't know that there's a right or wrong, but you can do that. You can combine them if you want to, or you could still keep them separate and just answer the selection questions more than once. Uh, but this is all about this room, and we can open any room we want or any project we want. These list views are just that, a list view, but if you wanted to look at this particular room, let's say we wanted to look at this kitchen, we could open it and look at it in kind of this linear fashion of what happens as a room, but we can also look at the same information just scrolling left to right, although we're seeing in the context of all of these other things in here with it, where when we open it, we're just looking at this one room and all the details about this room. And so you could just real quick, we'll scan down through here. So we're naming the room. Um, we're saying where the room is in our sequence of events. So we're at the design stage for this. If we click in this field, these are all of our different sequence of events, starting at ballpark, selections, estimate, field measure, and you'll see why this is important in a few minutes. Also the colors of these. Design, check field measure, proposal, engineering. These can be anything you want. The words can be, you can change them, or you can even add additional steps, or you can remove steps. You can make this as complex or simple as you want. But after engineering, we machine it, we finish it, we assemble it, we hardware it, we deliver it, we install it, it's complete or it needs to move to the end and they decline. So we gave them an estimate proposal and they declined it because we also want to track our win-loss ratio. And so this last column gives us that ability to look at that win-loss ratio at the end of the year. All right, let's dig a little deeper into this rooms area because this is where the meat of the product is, right here, all of these different views. So right now, the one we've been looking at is the selections table view. So we have an all table view, ballpark estimates, selections, production schedule, and then delivery schedule. This is just a uh, slightly different filtered out version of the production schedule. So starting with the ballpark estimate, which would be the first thing that happened with a customer, we would come through here and just fill in a couple things. So if we added a new job, you just come down to the bottom and say, I want to add a new job right here with the new button and then you would answer just a very few questions and then we give it a name and we'll just call this test 13 since I see 12 there and we'll say this is a master master bath and then we can tab or we can open it however we want to do it um, then we would link it to a project. I'm not going to do that right now. I just want to kind of walk you through this process. I'm going to open it up. But that would be the first thing you would do is link it to a project. 
then give the room a name and you could pick the name here if the name is not there you just type it in up here and it'll give you the opportunity to add it but since we do have that one we'll do that then you give the room a status we're starting out so we'd be doing a ballpark estimate which is what we're doing then we would choose the designer salesperson give it a proposed delivery date doesn't necessarily mean it'll actually be the delivery date. We can skip this field until we get to the point where we're ready to build the job. But to get this ballpark estimate, all we have to do is put in here an estimated cabinet quantity. So I'm going to say there's 21 cabinets. And then choose my rates. And I can do this one of two ways. So you can see I have the option to choose the rates there. But I can also come down here and say, hey, I want to use a new room template. In the new room template, you could do that at the very beginning or when I did it, but you see what it did is it filled that part in for me from that template. also gave me the icon for the room. And so now we've got this, uh, these three estimates based on these rates. So these rates are from your past performance. You glean those from other parts of this program. And we have this low estimate, average estimate, and high estimate. And I would give that price to someone trying to pre-qualify them. You know, best case scenario, your job with 21 cabinets is going to cost you $18,900. If you pick what most people pick, it's going to cost you about $23,100. And if you have really rich taste, it's going to cost you $31,500. So that's the ballpark estimate. Quick and easy. The rest of this is all about additional steps you do through this, but you actually do them from each area. The next step, if they accept that ballpark estimate, is you come to Selections. And we just come right back to that same, we just come to a different view, but we come back to that same job, open it up, and continue to answer those questions. So for the selections, again, we still don't know this actual cabinet quantity yet, so we would skip that, but I want to keep it in that position for other reasons. So we would come down here and say that the interior material, let's just kind of pick some stuff here real quick, UV plywood, um, it's going to be cherry, the edge band is going to be designer white, which doesn't make any sense, but I'm just picking stuff. Um, let's say it's going to be a shaker door, and the edge profile is LO34, and the door frame is square. And you can add as many of these things as you want and name them anything you want. It's just the things that you need to enter into your estimating software would be entered in here. So I might say this top drawer is a slab, but then my deeper drawers or the shaker style. What drawer box? We'll just say it's a dovetailed birch drawer. And the, since it was cherry, we'll say that it's ginger with a sable glaze. And the sheen is 15. And you could have all the different sheens in there. Whatever your crown is. And then whatever your light rail is. And you've completed this the selections for this test 13 job. Again, it still needs to be linked to a project, and I would have done that, but just for this uh, sample, I don't need to do that right now. So the next thing we would do, once we'd gone through the estimate and the proposal in those processes, would be to go to the production schedule. So the estimate and proposal, if we jump right back into the selections process and jump into this job, to do the proposal, we would just simply come in here and say, after we created it in our estimating software, we'd come in here and say, okay, there really were only 20 cabinets. And let's say that the job cost was 22850 Just totally making up a number here. And then that would give us an, a per cabinet cost of 1142 By having those numbers in here, when we get to our production schedule, we actually see those numbers. So that, that happens to be our job sitting there in ballpark estimate. And so when we're ready for this job to move forward, we start sliding this job from one section to the next. And so when the guy who's doing the selection process gets all these selections, and we should have changed that selection is when I got done making the selection. So, And then once that estimate is done, you move to there. And once you've gone out and field measured the job, you move to there. But you could also, if you were in here and you were getting ready to, you, you had gone out and field measured it and you were getting ready to design it, you just come in here and pick it here. It does the same thing. It just moved it over into that next column. Then when you get done designing it, you move it to the double check your field measurements and you just continue to move this thing through the process. And you see here this production schedule has all of the different jobs all the way through hardware delivery and installation and then complete. And so and then the jobs that you didn't win. 
So all of them are here, and this is the absolute best way to find your constraint. If you find one of these with a bunch of items in it, this is not real, but right now we would have to kind of be a toss-up between any of these that are two, but typically there would be one. If you, you always have a constraint, and that constraint would show up as having multiple items in it. So that's what the production schedule does. And then your delivery schedule is calendar view and the calendar view helps you sort those jobs where they go and we'll look at that again shortly but and I'll explain a little more about it but this calendar view is how you come in here and decide where your next job can go so if we were let's see where we're at here so we're in November right now scrolling through November and this here's December 1st and we're coming through and say well we wouldn't want to put a job on the week of Christmas so keep coming into January um, right here is a week that we could probably put something but we would want to look at the dollar volume in the jobs we've plugged in here already and if our volume allowed maybe this is too much work for us to do in one week and some of it bleeds over into this week but you know you find your blank spots so where you put your next job so you can tell them early on where you can put it and then you can you see here these don't have the second two numbers so these haven't been committed yet you see here they have dollar values if they don't have dollar values just cabinet quantities th this is basically you've gone through this ballpark estimate and you have said we could probably do your job here unless somebody else takes that week before you claim that week um, but this gives you a clue of how many cabinets are in that job so if it's a week partial week or half you know we know that if the cabinet quantity is around 20 we know that's a full week for a company that wants twenty thousand dollars in sales so six is definitely not a week. We're looking for more sales than that. Forty is two weeks. So that really gives you a really good idea where you can plug jobs in. So that's how that the meat of this system works going through rooms is ballpark estimates, selections, production schedule, and delivery schedule. You'll use this rooms area more than anything else. And then the financials is getting a little more sophisticated here. <laughs> Um, and this is somewhat complicated in one sense but very simplistic in another so there's a lot of information going on here and you need to be able to feed us that information from somewhere and now this is just like a table of contents we can skip to the end if we wanted to if we wanted to go to the very bottom we clicked on that it would, instead of scrolling down to the bottom we can go to any of these sections that are below this by just clicking on the sections but if we scroll down we can get there as well so the first thing we're trying to do is here's all of our rooms all the rooms we did and we're trying to determine when we build that and, and it's separate from this delivery date and it might be that this is November and this is December I don't know how you do that but we're giving you the ability to at this point in time you've done all of this stuff prior it's just showing here this would be blank when you first come in just like these last few are they haven't been answered yet they haven't been tagged to a build month but that's what we're asking you to do here is once this job has gotten far enough along that it's well, really complete is when you should do it once we get into February then we would tag this as 2021-02 and this one would be also tagged as 2021-02 and this one would be 2021-03 um, but we're tagging our projects as we go down this list this is just for reference only and I tell you that in these instructions just to be able to look at it in this calendar view this is in my opinion the most valuable part of this app the next thing I'd ask you for is your operating expenses and I would I just tell you right down here how to get that from QuickBooks real short and sweet all you gotta do is make sure that all your totally variable expenses are listed as chart of accounts that's all you have to do and so totally variable expenses are things that change if you sell one more cabinet or change if you sell one less cabinet so you buy less of them if you buy, do one less cabinet you buy more of them if you do one more cabinet so rent doesn't work that way utilities don't work that way insurance doesn't work that way but subcontract labor does work that way so if you are subcontracting your installations they would be not here in operating expenses they would be in the t totally variable expenses or the cost of sales we're telling you how to grab these numbers from QuickBooks here but you have two sets of these numbers operating expenses and then if we scroll down just a little skip past this and come back and then totally variable costs so these totally variable costs are the things that change if you sell one more or one less these operating expenses do not change if that the rent doesn't change and your salary typically does not change if you sell 
um, eighty thousand dollars one month and sixty thousand dollars the next month and eighty thousand the next month and forty thousand and one hundred and twenty thousand typically your employee count doesn't change much it's usually a percentage if you are doing one hundred and twenty thousand and you have one more man it's still a percentage of that sale so you kind of have to buy into that but it's it's true and it proves out to be true we don't lay off every single time we have a bad month and we don't hire every time we have a good month our business sales fluctuate but our employees don't fluctuate except just the regular turnover that comes with time and the unique nature of a human being so operating expenses are these types of things you know the communications insurance maintenance the things that do not change just because you build one more or sell one more or one less cabinet and you can do these individually add as many of these fields as you want and, and identify them and, and track them and it adds them up or you can grab them from QuickBooks and leave all these blank at zero and just put it in this one field it'll do the same thing it'll total it up the same way so if I put 14,565 here and leave all these at zero I'll still get the same total to work from and then the totally variable costs a little harder and we give you two ways to deal with this that's why the instructions are so long so if you know what they are, you can enter them here. Um, you can enter them individually, like we're showing here in November. If we wanted to, we could have said, okay, my exterior components, I have bought all those from Conestoga, let's say, and I would enter the total dollars for those here, and then I would enter the total dollars for maybe my cabinet parts from Cabinage here. Or I just enter all of them, which is what we ended up doing, is just saying all of that was $43,908 for the month of November. Another way of doing that is and I'll show you here so he, we're telling you about this above the line performance this is awesome stuff and we'll go deep into it in a separate video I'm just trying to do an overview and and trying to keep it as short as I can but it's almost impossible so if we come down here to our and I don't have a many months in here so this is not as effective as it would be if I had a bunch of months in here um, but so we have November December and January and we're in the middle of December right now and so we see here that for the month of November we made a 33 percent net profit and if we do all the things that I've attributed here for December I've gone ahead and attributed to all the sales even though we haven't done them all yet I've gone ahead and attributed them we could make 32 percent well I've done the same thing for January I've worked out all the things that's not how it would work these would be really bad initially you'd have hardly any sales and typically you wouldn't apply your uh, costs either I've just done that so I'm trying to mock all this up um, ultimately it won't be this even number this these will be terrible at, at the beginning if you actually have just a couple sales and you attribute all of your costs you could even attribute your costs week to week as you paid them I don't think people are going to want to do that but the secondary method of going about this is so we've got a roll up here that is from you entering something up here so you can see that January is 34,531 doesn't do anything but move it down here you've still got to type something in here but I'm also doing this calculation based off you telling me so if you were doing an all outsource business model this low investment low overhead business model where you bought everything you didn't have equipment in a, in a manufacturing plant you just assembled cabinets you know sold them designed it engineered it ordered everything assembled it and delivered it installed it that's a different business model this number is going to be a lot higher for you than it is for somebody that theirs might be on the total variable cost as low as 20 25 percent most are probably going to fall somewhere between 25 and 30 uh, but these guys don't have all the, the plant labor they don't have it <laughs> so it you know all the labor falls into the cost of the materials because they're buying all the materials it does it's not a different total typically it's just that pieces of the total are different so one person's overhead these numbers over here are going to be higher and these over here are going to be lower and then another person they're going to be higher over here and lower over there depending on what your business model is but we're giving you the ability on the total variable cost to eat, to type either the rolled up number or have us calculate a number for you and then you type that number so you're going to type one of these two numbers this one is just looking at the total sales and saying hey about 50 percent of that is going to be my total variable cost and this looking at this from a 30,000 foot view kind of like a, a a masters in business administration would an MBA guy would look at everything from 30,000 foot view he's not going to get down in the bushes we don't really care if this is 51 percent this month or 49 percent this month we just want to get a good idea of what our total variable costs are and then what our operating expense is and operating expense could also be done that way I haven't done that yet but I may add those additional columns where you're typing this in rather than filling in all those individual pieces 
but the net result is you see your net profit and early in the month so in this current month right now this should not be 32 percent it should have a few sales because I'm early in January and it and could have some calculated cost or it could be a great number because I haven't put any costs in at the end of the month is when I do it the current month should be almost irrelevant what you should really be looking at is past performance and if we want to take a real quick peek at what one would look like in past performance I've mocked this up and these, these are real numbers for a particular customer um, that is using the program so if we came into his financials for this company we've mocked up the we've gone back and recreated the whole year um, because we've created this after this year so here's all of his jobs for the year and then here's the, the rooms looking at it month by month of when they were delivered and then here's all of his operating expenses through the year and of course this was a new startup company so you'll see when we get down here um, here, here's his total variable costs and we'll show you the different ways of doing that but when we look at this past 12 months this is pretty cool we're seeing his net profit up here now he didn't have any overhead initially he wasn't paying himself um, for these first three months he's just saying do I even want to do this um, this is a completely different business model but January February March he didn't pay himself anything he, you know he already had a cell phone he already had vehicles he just didn't have any expenses but he did have pretty significant sales <laughs> Um, for somebody who wasn't technically in the cadet business yet and then he said oh, by April he said yeah I do want to do this and so we said hey well let's let's pay ourselves something let's pay ourselves five hundred dollars a week and so we started doing that for the next three months and his, his net profit is pretty stout with no overhead then we said well heck yeah I definitely want to do this so we started paying ourselves a thousand dollars a week and then by the here in November we decide yes this is the business I want to be in and I'm going to start attributing the appropriate amount even though I have another company that is paying all this overhead because I'm working out of the back of a building I already have we're going to let the cabinet company pay its portion so then and this month wasn't done yet we did this in November so it had a, a negative because we didn't finish out the sales and we did put in all these expenses so but this is a beautiful way to look at this like I'm waiting as I'm coming into November December again I haven't gone back and updated all of this um, for this negative to become zero ultimately that's what you would be watching in that other view is this one looking for it to get to zero what are the where are the sales at keeping my eye on sales and then looking for this uh, it should be horrible initially because you're gonna have no sales but maybe you've attributed the costs and that's up to you when you attribute them and attributed attributing the cost is nothing more than filling in this column month paid month paid for the variables and the operating expenses and then up here at the top is the this month build and so when you add that in is when it shows up at the bottom so it's a pretty awesome way of doing that then the last thing I want to show you is this processes area and the processes area is the ability to have it's, it's an operations manual or standard operating procedures completely reimagined we're taking these things and looking at them per job rather than having this list of things that we tell people to do in a three ring binder or in a, a Pentaflex thing that you mount to the machine and say, you know, here's what I, when you can build a cabinet, do this, 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 and this. When you engineer a cabinet, do this, this, and this. Well, it, you have this list, and if you skip a step, you have no way to know you did because it's just a bulleted or numbered list. Well, this is, so we, if we come down here, and this, we'll skip some of this stuff, but this is like the big overview sequence of events for our company. A new, com a new employee coming in should be required to read all this. Now, it's not huge when it's all rolled up. It's fairly big, but not huge. But you unroll it as you do it, and you would have every new, new employee read all of it and then reference it, and you're referencing it per job. I'm tying it to this test one kitchen. This operations manual, these steps are for this kitchen. So if I'm doing my estimating procedures, and I have never done it before, now you'd have to have some sort of training, but if I'd never done it before, I still wouldn't remember everything I was told. But once I had run through it with somebody, I could do it because I'm checking it off. From the clients tab, do this. From the jobs tab, do this. From the job tab, do this too. From the client info tab, do this. And as I do these things, I'm checking them off. So, yep, I've done that. Yep, I've done that. Phone rings. I go answer the phone. I go deal with it. I come back. Okay, I need to come back here. It's not a numbered list that I don't remember where I was. It's not a bulleted list that I don't know where I was. At the end of the job, if something is wrong, you can come back and see you've got the breadcrumb trail of that this was done this will still be checked or unchecked if somebody skipped a step you'll know who <laughs> so I mean you can actually look at it and find who did that who checked that so this is uh, 
operations manual, standard operating procedures, those type of things reimagined, and we have them for the estimating, field measure processes, design procedures, you know, whatever your design software is. And, and this, this is a template. You would take this and make it for you. You might put cabinet vision there. You might put mosaic there. And then you would change the steps that are in here of what you want to do. But again, it's a checked list of things. And then you can have sub lists. So we don't always do this, but if I need to do that, um, and I think some you should every time, but we can also qualify it and say, okay, this is a big long list of things, but I can have some little simple instructions here, additional instructions to the primary instructions. I can come in here and say, look, I need you on these orange items, all these items that are orange, I need you to check them for every single job. Always check them. These orange items are only checked if you have staggered cabinets, either staggered in height or staggered in depth. These you typically keep all the time, so these are your defaults. And, and unless something weird is happening, you can ignore the gray ones. And these red ones we're not using anymore. We've st we stopped using them. So if I come down through this really long list, I could very quickly come here and do these three, these two, this one, this one, and I'm done. I've done all of the ones that are orange, and then I can you know, check them off as I go and then jump out of here. So you can qualify them that way. And you can create any list like that if you need to. If there's things they're allowed to ignore, you can qualify it with simple instructions. Then there's like the reminders. Did you do these things? You know, just like those, almost a second pass through. Did you do these really critical things that we tend to make mistakes at? Um, and you can have that for every single process. Engineering procedures through the different pieces of software that you use typically. Um, the receiving inventory, how does, you know, when somebody receives inventory, then come in here and it's a checklist. Then the actual manufacturing process, each and every one of them defined. So if they were getting ready to start the CNC and, and if they've never used it, we had employees over and over and over again, temporary employees come in and work after 15 minutes of instruction and then just keep going back through this list and do this, 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 and this. Now we don't put check boxes next to these because you're doing it over and over and over again and we wouldn't want to check them and uncheck them. We do, and they can pay attention. It's not that many steps really and truly. Um, but, and most of them are not dealing with this part. Um, but you know, you're kind of doing this when you start them out. Okay, we're going to get ready to work, set up, um, and then we might need to do the following if necessary. But this is the part we would have in the new, you know, temporary employee doing, okay, I need you to do this, 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 you just go through these steps, there's not that many, um, and then process your parts like this, and then shut down the router, and on weekends and weekdays we just differentiate what happens. Um, pretty simple instructions, and you can make any of these checkboxes you want, they could be a numbered list, they could be a bulleted list, if you think that a, uh, a checkbox is better, it's easy to change it. So there's all the machining processes and you can edit every single one of them, make them anything you want, and then all the assembly procedures uh, for assembling the cabinets, and we literally go in here step by step. You can, with your iPhone, you could edit this and make it anything you want it to be. You can switch that picture out in a matter of seconds, uh, take a new picture and put it in there. But we're walking through these steps, review the drawings for the cabinet, locate the parts for the cabinet, do put the drawer guide on. Um, if it's got pull-out shelves, do this instead. Um, here's the drawer guide you use for each different depth of cabinet, if it's a Zargon, if it's a Nova Pro, if it's an undermount slide, whether that's bloom or grass or whatever. Um, put your hinge plates on. This is with the one you use for these types of cabinets if it's bloom. This is the plate you use if it, you're using grass for the different types of cabinets. These are kind of specialty instructions for the extended end versus the, the blind versus the diagonal versus a triangle cabinet, those kind of things. Um, you've got all your different uh, step by step. You know, put your Put your deck down and put your leg sockets on. Fold up the side and staple it on. Fold up the other side and staple it on. Put the nailer in. You just step by step cut out this little bit of edge banding so the back will slide in. Slide the back in. Screw it. And the, that you know, you got a picture. So there should be a staple there, a staple there, a staple there. And then when you get done, you're running a screw there and a screw there. S make sure it's square. Um, staple the back in with that particular stapler. Add another staple here. I mean, you you can be as specific as you want, right down to you know, you know, drill with that drill, um, sand off any nibs with that, and then put it where it goes. <laughs> so you can get as specific as you want to get with this, all the way through even installation. Let's pop back up and close this one. This one's pretty big, um, so it takes a minute to scroll back up to the top of this one because it's so big.
but we have the same thing for installation. And there's finished processes, hardware procedures, delivery procedures, but in full access layout, and then the full access wall and tall cabinets. I mean, we come through and we talk about how to how to do these things. Even that those accessories or the assembly, I didn't go far enough, but there's even videos for each of the special cabinet types. You know, there's a wall cabinet and then a diagonal wall cabinet and then a pie cut wall. You know, there's a video for each of those. And you can create those videos with a smartphone in a matter of minutes. So this gives you, uh, you know, the installation process. If your guys are out in the field and they're doing this, okay, we've put up the steel rail. Uh, now we're, you know, doing this. Now we're doing this. If the homeowner calls you back at the office, you can pop into your phone right then and look and see where they're at. And say, yeah, they're getting ready to install the, the base cabinets. They've already installed the wall cabinet, whatever. Wh wherever they're at in this, you can pop in and say they're, where they're at in the process. Um, and then if something turns out to not be done, you know, there's some accountability. Who checked that box? Who said you did it and you didn't do it? That kind of thing. So that's the big picture overview of the World Domination Custom Cabinetry app. Um, we'll go into each one of these things that we briefly looked at in depth in following videos and thanks for watching.